Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast which we smash apart the films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in 20 minute chunks so we can analyze them in scrupulous detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Road to Infinity podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco. And okay, we're I'm so excited about this because this was, to mm-hmm. me, of even all the segments that we talked about with Mr. Notary, I learned so much, and, and thanks to your diligent research and also your <laughs> general knowledge... I had no idea that he was in so many more of these comic book roles than just the Hulk or even as we get later on in the MCU. It was amazing. It was totally incredible. Yeah, exactly. Here we are, minute 110 of uh, Incredible Hulk by Louis Leterrier. As the credits roll, uh, we're talking to Terry Notary. Yeah, this was interesting. This was really a lot of fun for me, too, because as I dug into his IMDb profile, at this point in his career, he's he's much more behind the scenes. Like eventually, he'll become a, a physical performer where he'll do mocap and all that stuff. But the, the, for a lot of this, he's just teaching people how to move. And so when I looked at his credit, I was like, he did that. He worked on that. He worked right. on that. I mean, it's amazing. Like we're gonna we're gonna start out talking about uh, X Men, X X Men Two, I should say, uh, and then we're gonna go on to there. And you're actually gonna be really surprised uh, to hear some of the the movies that he's worked on that you had no idea that Terry Notary was involved with. So now we're getting now so now we're getting to the nerdy stuff, people. So those of you who are waiting through waiting through the Grinch and uh, movement classes, well, here we go. Here's here's now we get to some of the nitty gritty. Let's throw it back to us talking to Mr. Terry Notary about his time in comic book movies. So uh, from there, you actually first got into what we're most uh, you know, yeah. in, in, involved in is comic book movies. You got to work on X2. So you and Alan Cumming uh, helped come up with uh, how Nightcrawler moved. Yes. Um, so he was, you know, he's like a he's like a musical theater guy. Right. And so it was like really kind of, it was awesome. He's such an amazing guy. Hard worker. Applied everything. And I just wanted to, he had this sort of prehensile tail. So it was like, mm-hmm. that sort of drove like all the sort of, wow. it was like liquid. It was like liquid oil. You know, we wanted this sort of suspensions, mm-hmm. the moments of suspension to be, to be like, like negative space, you know, in a cool comic, you know, configuration. It was like, it was all about like the negative space that was open and like these beautiful positions and, and then (laughs) boom. And it was like, everything kind of floated. Nothing came to, nothing had a hard stop to it. Everything was, it was like, it was like oil and smoke kind of thing. You know, it was that, Mm -hmm. that kind of a feel, Uh um, which was, which was really fun to play with, you know? And, uh, he, he, he embraced it really, really well. And, uh, but the, the whole sequence was, was, I think turned out really good. That opening sequence in that oh, yeah. White House, I think it really, I would, yeah. sort of I would still say nice that's one of the best comic book action Brian sequences great job I've ever seen. Whole, that whole thing was, yeah, it was, it was great. Fun to do that with him and, uh, uh, awesome guy, super hard worker. Yeah. So, I mean, Nightcrawler was amazing. We went through so many different tales. I can't, I can't even tell you how many tales we used. I think they had like a million dollars invested in these tales, which was oh, like wow. ridiculous. Um, wow. Yeah. It was like, there was one that was like, it was like mechanical and people could like whip it around. And, and there was another one that was just like a big, like, like rubber whip and then there was another one that was on a, a wire and it was like we finally just took the damn tails off and just said it's gonna freaking cg i mean it was like it became this whole like thing you know and so it's like because they wanted him to feel what it felt like but i was like no we're gonna we're gonna be able to play that you know much better and oh, you know we'll be able to do that you he'll see it and you'll know it and right and it'll, it'll work better yeah um so uh, you went off to Australia then to work on Superman Returns with Brian Singer. Um, there's no creatures in that, so I'm assuming that you were just helping Brandon Routh like get the proper Superman poses. Yes, yes. Oh. Brandon Routh is um, he he was it was like I think it was his first job like as yes a big big job kind of thing, and um, and he was very he was like Clark Kent. You know, he's like, hi, how you doing? You know, you know, very <laughs> humble and like, you know, and so I was like, okay, cool. This is, I know what we're going to do. We're going to read Eckhart Tolle. That's what we're going to do. 
So oh, we read, okay. we just read Eckhart Tolle. <laughs> and we got into like what it meant to be a hero and what it meant to really truly be. Because Superman is a tricky one. It's a very tricky one because he's, there's such goodness. There's such grace and, 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 and harmony in him that it's just simple. He's, it's just going back to really being simple and, and not flashy and not over the top. Um, and just being able to just carry yourself for, in your own body, in your own space and own that space and not be looking and needing and wanting and, and, and you know, pushing for, you know, for acceptance and whatever. Uh, but it was it was about just sort of just embodying his his space and being a, a, a hero through this simple sort of goodness, <laughs> you know, and all the action was just, you know, it is what it is. It's he's going to fly. He's going to do a thing. We worked a lot of that. We did tons of flying. And oh, my God, that the capes on that. Hmm. That was another thing. I think they spent three million dollars on capes that we had. We had we had like articulated capes. There were two of those uh, with remotes and then with little fingers things. We had um, every kind of fabric you could ever imagine to get the cape to flutter the right way with the fan fans. We had 15 fans on them at some angles and this and that. Little ones flying. None of that worked. Uh, finally, we just stood him up on a, on a lazy Susan and just had him stand up, put his arm up like that. <laughs> And it was like sometimes the simple oh, is the best. Now it's working, but we still had like eight puppeteers pulling on his cape. I, eight puppeteers were pulling on his cape, and and his head was going, you know, <laughs> <it> was like, <laughs> it was wobbling. It was like this is not working. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Like, <laughs> Bobblehead Superman. Yeah. So finally. We just cut the cape off, hmm. uh, cut it off. He had a little thing like that. And so the cape you see in the movie is 99.9% CG. Wow. So, <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So, and yeah. speaking of capes, you went on to portray a cape because weren't you the uh, cape oh, for yeah. Doctor Strange? Yeah. Yeah. Joe's like, hey, Terry, can you just, can you play the cape? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> Great. Get in there. <laughs> I was like, you know what the cape is? The cape's just like a dog. It's a dog. Yeah. Basically, right. it's a puppy. Right. It's a little oh, oh. you know, and it's like you know, it's this emotion with suspension. Right. You know, it's the suspension and then the decision. And then you know, it's the thought process. That's all awesome. you do is you articulate you articulate the the thought process of of a dog really right. basically you know and and then you just sort of make it feel like a piece of cloth yeah awesome <laughs> <That's> amazing <laughs> um so uh keeping on with the comic books you worked on fantastic four rise of the silver surfer which means you've worked with one of my favorite human beings doug jones uh amazing how did the guy. two of you amazing. uh get to figure out how to transfer Jack Kirby's drawings into like actual physical yeah. movement. Yeah. Well, um, it was funny. I, I, I'm a surfer myself. And hmm. so I took one of my surfboards and I took a big, um, camera ball head and I mounted it onto, um, uh, the surfboard and built this rig to where he, I, I had a bungee system and he was on a bungee system and he was carving and surfing and, 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 and feeling what it would feel like to really just sort of uh, carve and, and, you know, and, and what that is, you know, how, how the, what it felt like to surf, you know? So we did a lot of that and we did a lot of walking within, with intention and a lot of back body work. Cause he's very, driven from the back you know and and um and this sort of you know it's like it was like everything sort of glides to a stop and like um kind of like ink and water you know it's like like this it drifts and then just sort of building up the intention to move and then wow 
move into the next thing and drift to a stop. Wow. You know, so nothing ever came to a to a hard stop with this character either. It was kind of always alive, always reaching forward, you know, always sort of continuing to reach out and, and live past itself. Wow. That kind That's of a feeling. Yeah. You know? And so that takes work because you gotta, you know, you gotta find what how that translates in your own body and how you how it translates with your mind connection and all that stuff and then once you find it you're like oh, okay cool boom I'm, I'm in it i'm in the character and right now i can play nice yeah okay we're back in the studio just rob and i sadly we're back to just two oh but you know connected <laughs> we're not in the same room because right. still things yeah exactly uh, but yeah, how awesome was that though? I mean, like, I, I mean, I had no idea, like, until I read his profile, I'm like, you worked on Superman? That's like, incredible. What? Well, and, and also, <laughs> do, couldn't you believe the stories about the money spent on things that don't work out? He talked about <laughs> right. the Nightcrawler tale, the cape. You know, I, as someone who's worked on complicated projects, you know, sometimes things don't always work out the way you think and you got to figure yeah. it out. It was fantastic. Right. That's why you, that's why you have these talented people like exactly. the brilliant people at Rhythm and Hughes. Yes, uh, to yes. to pick up those kind of things and and make that that magic happen when they couldn't make it happen on set. Uh, but yeah, it's uh it, it, it's they say this is we're getting into the to the the real good stuff too. We're we're hitting our stride here with this conversation, but there's more to come. So so we still haven't even gotten to the Hulk yet. I mean, think of all the great stuff we've sorry we've heard we've heard from him so far and. You see what I'm saying? The man's a great storyteller. Just totally. you just give him a, the smallest prompt, and he's off and running, and you're just sitting there quite like, wow. <laughs> right. It was so cool. All right, so hope you enjoyed uh, Minute 110. Uh, we'll be back here with Minute 111 as we get getting much closer to uh, talking about uh, our, our big green friend. Uh, don't worry, that's coming, but <laughs> we wanted to make sure that we covered all the bases leading up to that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if you want to find us, we're on Discord. You can go, how the heck did two schlubs like you get to talk <laughs> <laughs> to oh, this guy? <laughs> and why did you ask him about X? And we can uh, I can answer that question. So nextreel.com slash Discord, uh, join our server. And if you're a patron, then you can actually get access to secret channels. Secret. So thank you for listening. I'll be back here for minute one eleven. Until next time, true believers. Bye.